Okay. Starting the 8.8 build for my car. Right now I'm just gonna cut off all the brackets. This thing used to be in my Jeep for the last uh, four or five years. Pretty crusty. So I've been through a lot. Um, I've got it all, all the guts out of it. I just gotta cut all the stuff off of it and then clean it up and get ready. My axles will be here next Tuesday. It is, uh, let's see, today is Thursday. So, uh, a few days, I'm just going to uh, get all the stuff cut off. I'll probably uh, narrow it and get it at least tacked up. I want to check it, check fit it with the axles before I finish well. Well, next day here. I got this all cleaned up yesterday. It's pretty good. Um, this thing served duty in my Jeep, which is kind of a, I use it in the rocks a lot. Um, I've got a few spots where actually when I cut it, cut the stuff off of the, from the Ford and put it in my Jeep, I never cleaned it up. And probably a good thing because some of my welds on this stuff was pretty crap from years ago. Not, not having a TIG, TIG uh, welder available and all that. But there's all sorts of spots. And like you can probably see, this has just, it's gotten eaten alive by rocks. It's still solid enough for what I'm doing with it. But it's kind of amazing how, how much crap these things can go through and still be fine. I mean, if you can tell how, how rolled over that is, that thing's just been up against rocks like crazy. I'm pretty, pretty gentle with my Jeep, but, uh, again, it, it goes through the rocks up the trails. If there's a rock, we just go over it. No big deal. Anyway, what I'm going to do today here in preparation is uh, I'm just going to go through with the TIG torch and fill up all these defects in it and um, yeah I might might weld in the tubes also while I'm at it so I got my fixture in it's an inch and a half bar. I've got um, slugs made for all the bearings to hold everything. Um, you can see my welds here. That's because um, this housing was bent pretty bad, supposed to, mostly on that side. Um, I was out uh, over a quarter of an inch on the ends, um, on that end at least. Um, there's a few different ways you can do it. I chose to weld up because welding will shrink. Um, you can heat it with a oxyacetylene torch, just uh, spots along there and then quench it. That'll um, do it. I'm not sure if it would have brought it in as far as I needed it to go, but I chose to just weld, weld up a bunch of stuff, throw a bunch of weld on it. Um, worked pretty good. I'll, uh, throw some pictures in to see the before but the after it's I measured it it's within 20 thousandths so it's pretty good anyway um, I've just got these trimmed for I kind of, kind of just got them close I'm actually gonna wait until I get the axles to um, weld them up just because I don't want to end up having them wrong and have to cut it back back apart so I'm just gonna wait okay <sighs> I think I already got a video on this I might have to edit this anyway um, this is all in order to straighten the tubes because the tubes were all bent both sides were bent this side was much worse than the other one 
Um, I've already got this side on. I did that last night. Um, I, uh, when I sent the info to Mosier for axles, I gave them a, a distance flange to flange of 55.5. Once I fitted it in the car, 55.5 was just a little bit narrow. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching it out to 56 inches. So taking a quarter of an inch away. Um, the way it is, it still has over an inch and a half of engagement on the splines. The way that their um, spools are, there's a, a ton of spline engagement for one and for two. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like they they have the axles going quite as deep as, as what they would be in a normal type carrier anyway. Either way, maybe I'm wrong. Um, either way, I've got the first one all welded in. Um, you can see that's that's going to be my the edge of the spool is about right here. Anyway, so what I'm doing now, or what I have done now, is I put the other axle in, um, and I'm basically mimicking the same thing. I put the other axle in, measured the distance that that this is sticking out. Um, and then marked, marked my housing for where it needs to be cut to get the same and then that gives me the 56 inches overall um, it's not exactly the right way but it's uh, it'll work just fine that way there's equal engagement and uh, all that anyway so now little tip of Seen from a bunch of different people. It's not me. I just stole it to keep your cut straight. This, I did not do this on the other side, and my cuts were not as straight as they could be. It took me a little bit of time to fix it. I just throw a piece of masking tape, mark, measure, and mark. And I was just—I knew I needed to take an inch off, so I just measured off of this for all of my marks since I've already cut the end up. So now I'm just going to tape it all the way around. And I should be able to run my cutoff wheel right up against that edge of the tape and it will be close enough. A lot of people really crazy over stress a lot of this stuff. It's got to be perfect and within a sixteenth of an inch and all this bullshit, but that's just not not the case. At least not when you're doing aftermarket axles in a spool. That's for sure. Maybe if you're trying to fit a, a factory length axle in a factory spool with with. Uh, C clips, you probably need to be pretty close, but being non C clip and everything else, it's you could probably vary it by three quarters of an inch and be fine. Anyway, I'm gonna get the cutting. Get ready to weld it up. Add my fixture in here, so these are just shims to make it a little bit tighter. It tightens down on the bar um, so I've got inserts in here locating it inserts in the ends locating it um, I got all the way through don't really need to you can just go through both bearing caps and through one end um, obviously that's what I did for the first end but uh, I got the bar long enough so I might as well just put it all the way through the entire thing um, so even after I straighten this thing out, it's still a little bit out of it. And that's the reason that you use a bar like this. So you can see that it's a little bit higher here than it is there. And that's even after I straightened this out a bit. Um, I thought it was closer than this or I would have kept working on it, but 
it is what it is at this point it's going to get welded up and uh, nobody but me will know the difference and um, no big deal so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the flange angle and so what I did on the other one because I I don't think that that angle really matters that much it's just for positioning of the brakes it's really all that it's for um, it doesn't set the pinion angle or anything like that so how I did the other one is I just set this to 90 well I set it close to 90 and then I just zeroed my meter zeroed it and then these are two different angles so then I went um, they're about 20 degrees off of each other so what I did is 10 degrees under 10 degrees over so it's 80 degrees and 80 degrees just like that and so that's how I'll do this side also I should put them in the same exact spot Enough. Like I said, this is really just for your location of your brakes. Nothing really more than that. Now what I'm going to do just a little bit of view there is I'm going to tack it in about ten different spots all the way around, and then uh, then I'll just start welding it up. close enough should be taxed sufficiently I sharpen my tungsten because it's pretty gross we'll get after it you tack it still want to kind of evenly place your welds um, I did it on the other side just about an inch inch and a half a weld and then turn it 180 degrees and keep just spacing it all the way around until you get it all done um, and that one the bar came out it was perfect as soon as it cooled down just perfect even even with uh, weird gaps in places and uh, not straight housing and everything else the bar just came out really nice which means the axles are going to float in nice the bearings are going to last it's not going to be binding just all together okay so now i'll let this cool off and uh then i'll take the bar out once it's completely cooled off so just a little preview of what it looks like. Should be good. Okay, we got the ring gear on the spool. Um, I'll torque down Loctite. Um, put these bearings on. Um, yesterday just heated them a couple hundred degrees um, froze the spool did the same thing with the ring gear heated it up a couple hundred degrees froze the spool so now I'm heating up the housing I've got the bearing races in the freezer so I will 
Um, get those knocked in. And then, uh, let's see, I've taken, taken the bearing and now I can't get it off. There we go. Just uh, ground out the inside of it so that it's a, a slip fit. Um, this is only for setup purposes to get the um, pinion depth set, which um, from everything I read almost always comes out to be exactly what the factory had in it, which was 27,000. So I'm starting with 27,000 shim in there. Um, we'll go with that, but then after we get that all dialed in, the thing's got to come back apart and we'll have a new bearing that gets pressed on there. So just waiting for it to heat up. It's a 355 gear ratio, it's a factory Ford gear ratio out of a truck. 